On Thursday, February 19th, Sojourner Douglas College lost their accreditation due to financial shortfalls. Supporters say the college that serves mainly African-American low-income students in Baltimore who rely on financial aid was hard hit by 2011 rollback in the federal Pell Grants. A 2014 study done by the United Negro College Fund predicted that changes would disproportionately impact low-income students and historical black colleges and universities. In turn, draining resources from these institutions. We reached out to the Middle State Commission and the Department of Education for a statement, but they had not responded by the time of publishing. I sat down with a faculty member from Sojourner Douglas College to talk about the administration's fight to keep the school's accreditation status from being revoked. Kareem Aziz is the Institutional and Planning Director for the college and he's going to share with us today the plight of that particular college. Uh, please join me in welcoming Kareem Aziz. Thank you very much. Tell me what's happening at the school, Sojourner Douglas, right now. Well, right now, Sojourner Douglas College, which has been in existence for 42 years uh, here in Baltimore and around the area, is facing the challenge of its life. Um, we have experienced a decision by the accrediting agency that governs this region of the country uh, whereby they have determined to withdraw their accreditation from our institution. And this in and of itself can be a life-threatening consequence. It is a decision that we are in the process of appealing and believe that we have solid grounds for that appeal, but uh, it is a situation that is also not isolated to just our, institu our institution. Um, the decision to withdraw the accreditation was predicated on an, a, an assessment that said that we did not meet uh, one of the 12 or 14 standards that the Middle States defines as what all colleges and universities need to comply with. That particular standard had to do with our financial resources. And it didn't have, did not have to do with the quality of our academic program or our governance methods or whether or not students are getting the services and supports they're supposed to receive. It had to do with our financial resources. And the conditions that have been placed on us, the hoops we've been required to jump through, have been, in our judge, judgment, quite subjective uh, and somewhat unfair, if you would. Um, and we can get more into just what that means. Yes, I, I would um, like to know what does it mean? Well, in 2011, um, we were seeking the renewal of our accreditational standards through a, what's called a um, periodic review report. And at, th at that time, a number of other factors that affect, that have been affecting black colleges in particular, mm -hmm. the small crash of colleges the economy. in general, the, certainly the crash of the economy, coupled by changes in the way federal regulations were being applied for mm -hmm. uh, financial aid. Mm -hmm students that were previously given the opportunity to earn Pell Grants mm -hmm. for as many as 18 semesters were cut back to 12 semesters. Mm -hmm. So they, that immediately impacted on our, our students because so many of our students are themselves transferred. These are our average age, we, we primarily serve an adult population. Okay. The average age of our student population is about 37. Mm -hmm. um, we also serve a poor population. The medium income of our entering students are about, is about $20,000. Okay. Medium income. That qualifies them for Pell Grants? You know, Pell Grants and a lot mm -hmm. of other things. Okay. You okay. know? Yeah. Um, they're, so they're eligible for the Pell Grants economically, mm 
Mm -hmm. But these are also folks who may have attempted school mm -hmm. any number of times mm -hmm. in the past mm -hmm. before they finally settle with a place that can really help. Oh, and you still really get semesters. Them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our students who had previously been able to count on another mm -hmm. six terms of study mm -hmm. all of a sudden found that money for that, ter that additional six terms or mm -hmm. what amounts to is about three years. Mm -hmm of opportun opportunities to, to have their aid, their tuition supported, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of that time was no longer available to them. Mm -hmm. Other things were changed in the federal regulations associated with the availability of loans. Okay. And the kind of credit worthiness tests that began being applied to students and to parents with the Parent well, Plus well, loan. Let me, let me jump yeah. in here mm -hmm. because I thought that uh, 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 under the Obama administration, I thought they had that made the, the loan process for students, especially indigenous students, uh, uh, easier. Are you saying that those regulations is making it more difficult? These regulations have impacted greatly um, our schools in particular. Uh, Morgan had a situation where uh, they were going to lose something along along the lines of two to three hundred students mm. that just were not able to meet their tuition. They had to go out and raise money to supplement those students' tuition and make that kind of money available because the loans that they had previously been able to get, they were no longer able to get. Morgan is paid or receives resources from the state mm -hmm. based upon the number of students that it serves. Mm -hmm. That five, that, that two to three hundred students mm -hmm. gone would have cost them five million dollars in their operating budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and would have been, we're talking about a few hundred thousand dollars worth of tuition fees mm -hmm. that, were, that, that were involved there. Yeah. So this is just one example. Uh, Clark Atlanta, I think, had about two or three hundred student mm -hmm. loss as well. Other schools all around the country began experiencing the same kind of direct, immediate problem mm -hmm. with their students being able to pay for their education mm -hmm. as a result of these regulations that were brought and put into effect without public comment, without public notice, without mm -hmm. folks being aware. And yes, it is quite curious that this would have happened under the administration that, we're, that we would hope for different kinds of uh, benefits. But this is, this, this is where we stand. So black colleges across the board have been uh, greatly affected by the uh, changes in federal f financial aid, greatly affected by the uh, changes in the kind of, of loans and and services that their, their students would be able to get. And it has been had a devastating effect on many, any number of schools. Uh, going back to Sojourner, the compound effect of these regulatory changes mm -hmm. meant an immediate drop in the kind of cash flow we ex experienced with our operations. Mm -hmm. So as our students Enrollment began to decline. We had to do a variety of adjustments mm -hmm. and changes in terms of our operations. Different kinds of issues emerged in terms of payments on, on past debts and taxes and other kinds of dynamics. There became a perfect storm of problems mm -hmm. that hit at the same time <clears throat> Middle States was taking a careful scrutiny mm -hmm. of our operations. Uh, we presented the case for our effectiveness, how well we're doing, and how we've been able to manage the services that we provide to the community. They came back to the financial issues and says, well, you're not debt free. So, well, you don't ask anyone else to be debt free. Why is that a requirement for us? Well, we don't agree with your projections. Well, our projections were based upon our experience. We've historically been doing, serving these many students with these many programs, providing, you know, generating these many graduates. Well, their determination was that we did not have the resources that we needed to keep ourselves afoot. Afoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We argue that that's 
not the case at all, uh, that we've faced bad times before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in our community, we know how to make a way out of no way, mm -hmm. you know, sense out of nonsense, mm -hmm. so that we have the ability to manage and restructure and readdress. Mm -hmm. However, with the threat of loose loss of accreditation, that just pulls us out of the game of receiving any kind of support. From the, the state from educational... The, from the federal government in okay. particular. Okay. Right. You know, um, our students would not be eligible so for like financial aid. it's a double aid. whammy. It's a tremendous effect. And the uh, uh, ultimately, 95% of our students rely on financial aid mm -hmm. to support mm -hmm. their, op their education mm -hmm. uh, at, at our school. And so that is the effect that this, the threat that this offers to our very survival as an institution. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a, the travesty of the circumstance. And we're arguing that this is such an extreme situation. Well, who else is being held to the standard? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we looked and the NAACP joined us in a examination of data available on higher educational institutions mm -hmm. that is publicly available through the IPEDS, National Center for Educational Statistics. Mm -hmm. And we s looked at all the schools in the Middle States region that had, re of which there are over 1,200 private schools. Mm -hmm. uh, of those, how many lost money last year, mm -hmm. if that's the criteria? You know, mm -hmm. and we found about eight or nine other schools that lost a million dollars or more okay. in okay. the past operating year. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the five-year history of those schools? You know, how have they done over mm -hmm. the past five years? Mm -hmm. And we found that those schools, most of which had significantly more loss over a longer period of time than Sojourner Douglas. Mm -hmm. However, none of those schools, with the exception of Harrisburg University, okay. uh, received any kind of penalty or, or uh, uh, sanction, mm -hmm. let alone threat of an actual removal of accreditation. Mm -hmm. Only Sojourner Douglas. Mm -hmm. And it was rather curious. Why Sojourner Douglas in this mix? And mm -hmm. this, of course, is part of the basis for our appeal. Mm -hmm. This is unfair treatment. Well, well, let me let me just open open up the the idea. I, I know some years back the historical black colleges were uh, following suit against the uh, the state education department because they were being underfunded. Uh, uh, relative to uh, the fundings that were going to white colleges and other colleges that seemed to have been a some sort of a, a covert attack on those colleges in terms of uh, not getting the funds necessary and at the same time talking about their management and talking about how they comported themselves in terms of graduate students. Do you think Shadrona Douglas might be part of that kind of uh, process that's taking place against the other colleges? These are not new issues mm -hmm. to institutional survival mm -hmm. in our community. Mm -hmm. um, that our institutions have emer emerged in the first place under duress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without the sanction and approval and, you know, of those who seek to place us in a less than, adver a a than ad advantaged situation, mm -hmm. uh, that it, is, it serves somebody's benefit mm -hmm. for black folk to be poor. Mm -hmm. And uneducated. And, uneducated. Mm -hmm. and those beneficial interests mm -hmm. have always sought to deny us whatever it was that is our due. Those five black colleges, HBCUs in Maryland, mm -hmm. that came together and said, one. Mm -hmm. But they're not seeing the benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, now, 
I can certainly attest to the fact that there have been major investments in Coppin mm -hmm. and Morgan, mm -hmm. you know, Bowie, UMES. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those schools have seen significant upgrades in their mm. physical plant and program services, mm -hmm. and that's, those are things to be applauded. But there, when you go to the, the nearest college next to them, mm -hmm. you'll see that same investment tripled, mm -hmm. quadrupled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that this notion of, you know, our schools do include, and, and so General Douglas, by virtue of the fact that we did not come into existence until 1980 as an independent institution, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, aren't able to qualify mm -hmm. as a HBCU, as a historically mm -hmm. black college. Mm -hmm. We are a predominantly black serving mm -hmm. institution and okay. can participate in some programs by mm -hmm. virtue of that. Mm -hmm. But we're not even able to benefit in the service, in the, mm -hmm. with the resources that mm -hmm. other schools okay. have been getting. Okay, in the interest of time, tell me what the, the public can do to assist or, or uh, do you have a plan going forward to kind of try to save the, uh, this uh, important institution? Well, one of the principal piece is to encourage our alumni, our students, our faculty, and others throughout the community that are aware of, of the college to stand tall with us. Mm -hmm. Right now, we do need your support. We need your support. Um, we need the voices of our community to come forward and acknowledge the importance that Sojourner Douglas College has and has had, has been and should be providing to our community. Okay, thank you for joining us, Kareem Aziz. Thank you very much, it's been a joy to be here. And thank you for joining The Real News. Mm -hmm.